Thank you, Carlos. We're uh, reaching the wrap-up of our presentation here now. Yeah. So based on um, what we have uh, shown you before, uh, as, as Carlos mentioned, uh, many of our projects are ongoing and we're still adding data to this data set. But a few things have become pretty clear. Manure can definitely offset some or not or all of the fertilizer needs. And it can also boost yield. Our trials are all with corn silage, corn grain right now. We had one where we did carry over a wheat field um, that we're looking for, forward to seeing the results for as well. But the, use, the yield bump was, was clearly visible in many of the sites. Yet there were also a few sites where that did not happen. And field history was an important aspect for evaluating the benefits of manure in terms of a yield uh, and a nitrogen uh, response. The microbial assessments seem to direct us towards thinking that manure addition is most efficient, effective in enhancing microbial biomass if there is already some level of microbial biomass to start from. So it was most effective in enhancing microbial biomass for a field with the longest manure application history, our field C. Our sampling um, comparison at planting at side rest time and at harvest showed us that sampling at side rest time seemed to give us the most useful information in terms of making decisions about nitrogen supply and responsiveness um, of that crop to both nitrogen and manure. As I mentioned, that was the summary of three locations from last year. We're currently working on adding nine more locations to this database and see if those results carry forward with the additional sites that we have. And it, I can tell you right now, it looks pretty promising, but we're not totally done with that analysis yet. Carlos showed you um, that manure is very variable across farms across storages on the same farm, and also across or during spreading events. That agitation component is a really big one in terms of folks that have liquid manure, um, storages, consistent agitation, and then efficient transfer processes during land application um, seemed really critical in minimizing nutrient variability. The idea here is if we know better what is in the manure, we can better manage it. Um, so these are all components that can contribute to having a more consistent source to be managing. The manure variability um, assessment also reminds us very clearly that we need to sample manure sources and not rely on bulk values. So frequent sampling of manure during spreading events, we saw more consistency at the hourly sampling. So it might be more important to, to do sort of sampling over a number of days as manure pits are being emptied than it would be to intend sample over a more shorter period of time. Those are our wrap up conclusions, uh, current status of what we found out about manure, how to manage it. We're uh, really interested in feedback and hearing from other folks. Um, there is some discussion going on in the uh, the Chesapeake Bay region with other land grant universities to see if we can set up similar trials like Juan Carlos presented across the Chesapeake Bay region to build bigger databases and to reevaluate that value of manure and our crediting systems moving forward. We want to acknowledge our multiple funding sor uh, sources and participants in, uh, in the program itself. Um, projects like these are very intense, a lot of people needed to pull that off, a lot of funding needed to make this work. So we're really uh, grateful for the different funding sources contributing to these efforts here. We're also really grateful to all the farms that participated in this project and uh, farms that are continuing to uh, participate as the program will, will go into next year as well. I'll leave you with uh, a thank you and uh, open it up for questions. Um, my email address is here. You can connect with us through that or uh, uh, follow us on on social media. We have a LinkedIn account and a X account that we uh, keep updated as well. 